Hi, this is Tom from ZeroToFinals.com. In this video, I'm going to be going through labyrinthitis. And you can find written notes on this topic at ZeroToFinals.com slash labyrinthitis or in the ear, nose and throat section of the Zero to Finals surgery book. So let's jump straight in. Labyrinthitis refers to inflammation of the bony labyrinth of the inner ear which includes the semicircular canal's vestibule, which is the middle section of the labyrinth, and the cochlea. The inflammation is usually attributed to a viral upper respiratory tract infection. Rarely, labyrinthitis can be caused by a bacterial infection. This may be an inflammatory response to a nearby infection or the result of bacteria or bacterial toxins entering the labyrinth itself. It's usually secondary to otitis media or meningitis. Let's talk about the presentation. Labyrinthitis presents with acute onset vertigo similar to vestibular neuronitis. Unlike vestibular neuronitis, labyrinthitis can also be associated with hearing loss and tinnitus. Patients may have symptoms associated with the causative virus, such as a cough, sore throat and blocked nose. So how do you make the diagnosis? A clinical diagnosis is based on the history and examination findings. Whenever a patient presents with vertigo, it's important to exclude a central cause of the vertigo, meaning vertigo caused by a problem in the brain, such as a posterior circulation infarction, which is a type of stroke. The head impulse test can be used to diagnose peripheral causes of vertigo, resulting from problems with the vestibular system, for example, vestibular neuronitis or labyrinthitis. Let's talk about management. Management of labyrinthitis is the same as with vestibular neuronitis, with supportive care and short term use of up to three days of medication to suppress the symptoms. The options for managing symptoms are prochlorperazine or antihistamines, for example, cyclozine, cinarazine, and promethazine. Antibiotics are used to treat bacterial labyrinthitis. They'll have no effect on viral causes. If there's a bacterial cause, the underlying infection, for example, otitis media or meningitis, needs appropriate treatment. Patients rarely have lasting symptoms, but these may include permanent hearing impairment. This is more common after bacterial labyrinthitis, particularly associated with meningitis. Finally, a Tom tip for you. Remember hearing loss as a key complication of meningitis. All patients with meningitis are offered audiology assessment as soon as they've recovered to assess for hearing impairment. This complication often comes up in exams and it's worth remembering. If you like this video, consider joining the Zero to Finals Patreon account where you get early access to these videos before they appear on YouTube. You also get access to my comprehensive course on how to learn medicine and do well in medical exams, digital flashcards for rapidly testing the key facts you need for medical exams, early access to the Zero to Finals podcast episodes, and question podcasts which you can use to test your knowledge on the go. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.